Greetings, grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the Minister in Placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Heighton. Just a reminder that the church office and the prayer space in the church are open on Tuesdays and Fridays from 10am for two hours. And you're most welcome to come and drop by and share with the people who are there or, or spend some time in prayer. Obviously, because of COVID-19 restrictions, numbers in the building are limited, but so far we haven't had to leave anyone out in the cold. In relation to these videos, we would really value any comment or feedback that you might have, and we've received a lot over the time that we've been doing them, but uh, please, if you've got some thoughts or ideas or suggestions, please let us know. We value your feedback. Recent events have demonstrated clearly that COVID-19 is an aggressive virus which is not easily thwarted. As people of faith, we do have some resources that we can use to help us and help others to navigate this time. And we've been exploring them in these videos. Last week, of course, we heard those words of Jesus, those words of comfort and hope, words of invitation. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. This week we'll be exploring a couple of other passages of Scripture that uh, offer us some resources. And we'll also be hearing from a guest, Rhonda Dingle, from Western Heights Uniting Church, who will offer some guidance in relation to stilling our souls and minds, opening ourselves to God's healing in the quiet. In the Biblical Book of Lamentations, the writer holds nothing back from God, and it is okay for us to do the same. In prayer, let us bring to God all our praise and thanksgiving, all that is weighing on our hearts and minds. Let us pray. God of comfort, who is close to us wherever we are, we are living in what for us is a strange time, when even a trip to the supermarket is not without stress and the constant babble of information coming from the media can be both disturbing and just plain overwhelming. Our minds at times feel like they are going round in circles and our souls seem as lead. So in this time of prayer, we lay before you the totality of our living, our struggles, our joys, our needs, our successes, our doubts, our deep hurts, our nagging fears, even our sins. Where needed, bring your healing, bring your forgiveness, bring your comfort. Help us to focus on you, to trust in you and the hope you offer. Help us to hear right deep inside of ourselves the good news that your love never ends and your grace knows no limit. That indeed, your mercies are new each morning. So wonderful is your faithfulness. Praise and thanksgiving be to you, loving God, Holy One and Holy Three. In the name of Christ, the risen, crucified one. Amen. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood more than gold. My soul continually thinks of it and is bound down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy has never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, 
so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. The American actor Tom Hanks turned 64 this last week. He's starred in so many great films, hasn't he, including a real favourite of mine, Apollo 13, in which he took the role of Jim Lovell, the spaceship commander. The story of Apollo 13 is, is an amazing one. There it was, the spaceship on its way to the moon, when suddenly there was an explosion, which left the situation extremely dire. And the story, of course, is all about how NASA got those astronauts back, how they managed to save those astronauts. This involved collaboration amongst a huge number of people. It involved agility and flexibility in thinking, and it involved good leadership. In the film, this good leadership is, is shown in many different ways. Early on in the, in, the, in the film, the flight director on the ground, Gene Krantz, played by Ed Harris, asks his team, what is the status of the spacecraft? And all these experts stand around him and tell him about all the things that are inoperable, that are broken, that are, that are just not functioning. And then in a fantastic piece of um, leadership, Kranz asks his team, what do we have on the spacecraft that's good? In other words, what resources do we actually have which will enable us to save these guys? And this power of thinking this way is shown a little later in the film. There's a problem with the carbon dioxide levels on the, uh, on the spacecraft. There's a scrubber that's not working properly and needs to be fixed, or otherwise the, the astronauts are going to die. So um, Kranz tells his team to fix it, to use the stuff that's on the spacecraft to come up with some sort of a contraption which will enable this problem to be overcome. And so there's this wonderful scene in which all these engineers are sitting in a room and someone comes in with a cardboard box full of all sorts of bits and pieces that are on the spacecraft, pipes and duct tape and boxes and all sorts of odds and ends. And they chuck them on the table and they create this Heath Robinson contraption which will solve the problem. In other words, they take the resources that are there, even though they're only bits and pieces, they take the resources that are there and they use them to overcome the problem. In our current situation, things are pretty difficult, aren't they, during this time of this pandemic. Things aren't as they usually are. In some places, this, the situation is quite dire. But, you know, that, that approach that is underlined in the film about taking the resources that are on the table and using them, using them to help us to navigate the situation, I think does apply. And it applies to us as Christians, too. And by resources, I don't just mean, for example, this camera that I'm using to film myself giving this short reflection, or Zoom. But uh, resources that are deep and, and profound. Such things as scripture. Uh, we, we are blessed as Christians to have resources like scripture to help us navigate the way. And I want to reflect a little bit on how our two readings today enable us to navigate through our current situation, give us some resources for the journey. The first reading was from the book of Lamentations, which is really a book of poetry in which the author agonises over all the pain and suffering experienced by the people of Israel as the result of a terrible dis catastrophe that has befallen them. If you read the book, be prepared. It's quite shocking in parts with graphic descriptions of the people's plight. It's almost MA 15 plus rated if it was going to be on the TV. Jerusalem has been ransacked and left pretty much abandoned and in ruins. Many are dead. So many people, and especially the leaders, have been hauled off to exile in Babylon. People are starving. And the writer pulls no punches with naming the brokenness of the people and the struggles to see where God might be in it all. Things are so bad. Has God abandoned Israel? Now, the short passage that you heard read begins with the line, the thought of my affliction and my homelessness 
is wormwood and gall. Now, wormwood and gall are terribly, terribly bitter things, as is the situation of the people of Israel, as is the situation of the writer. And yet the writer then adds, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Now, the book of Lamentations' presence in the Bible reminds us of the value and appropriateness of naming things as they are, about crying out to God, about naming our grief, calling to God, where are you in this pandemic? Where are you in this situation? How long will this affliction last, O Lord? In other words, the book of Lamentation reminds us that we don't have to be polite with God. We can be honest with God. The words of the writer, of course, also remind us that despite the destruction that occurred in Jerusalem, God has not given up on his people. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Today's other reading, of course, was from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, actually his second letter to the Corinthians, the Christians there. And he reminds us in this passage, as he reminds them, that God is a God of comfort, that God is not a vindictive God. God offers real solace in the midst of trying times and in the midst of the worst of afflictions. And more than this, God in Christ has suffered. Christ went to the cross. God is not some sort of distant observer of the situation. God has shared in and does share in the suffering as well as the joys of the world. So God is right there in the midst of those COVID-19 wards that we see on television with the patients, with the staff, with the isolated families. God is a God of comfort. And through prayer, we can tap into that comfort. Rhonda Dingle, who is someone who is much experienced in the inner journey, will shortly share with us about the value of silence, of being still, of breathing in God's comfort. And those of us, as Paul writes, who have received the comfort of God, are called to share that comfort with others. And we can share comfort. We have resources. There are things on our tables that we can offer to others in the way of care and comfort. There's a phone that we can pick up to call someone in need. We can and are called to share the comfort we have received. As Paul writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any way afflicted. Sisters and brothers, during these times we have resources, physical resources and spiritual resources. We are blessed with resources that we can use to take the journey, to make the journey. Being still. Doing nothing for a while can be one of the hardest things in life, but has the potential to be liberating if we just give it a try. Taking the time to pause for a minute or two, or maybe even for five or ten minutes each day, and noticing what is happening around us and or within us can be calming, and a way of caring for and nurturing ourselves. The idea has been around as long as humans have been, of course. The poets of East Asia, the philosophers of ancient Greece and Rome regularly made stillness the centre of their lives. And many of us are aware of verse 10 from Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. How can we encourage and teach ourselves to be still? Well, it is indeed by practising, setting aside time each day to simply be. And when you do so, of course, your mind will start to dart here, there and everywhere. It's perfectly natural that this will happen. So try not to let this bother you. Just accept it 
and then maybe to settle a little, you might choose one or more of the following ideas. Notice your breathing, the in and out. Just notice. Light a candle and simply enjoy the flicker of the flame. Choose a stone, a leaf or a piece of fabric to hold and focus on, especially when your mind starts to buzz. Sit and listen to a piece of music that is calming and kind to your senses. Be aware of your body and ease any tension you notice. Perhaps say the words, be still, or other words you're familiar with that may help calm your mind. And remember, being still takes practice, so be kind to yourself as you give it a go. And hang in there, it's worth it. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. And a reflection from Edwina Gately. Be silent. Be still. Alone. Empty. Before your God. Say nothing. Be silent. Let your God look upon you. That is all. God knows. God understands. God loves you with an enormous love. God only wants to look upon you with love. Quiet. Still. Be. Let your God love you. Our prayer of intercession today is based on a prayer by a Church of Scotland minister, the Reverend Anne Patton. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you tell us not to be afraid of what the future holds, not to worry about tomorrow. But you know we find this difficult, for we do worry about so many things, our families, our friends, our circumstances. So we come before you this day with our concerns big and small. We bring our big concerns about health and happiness and security, especially in these days of the pandemic. We bring concerns about the world we live in and its future existence. We bring big concerns about the way some people in our world are treated, treated as less than human. We bring our deep concerns for the church and the place of faith in this country. For in this country, so often the role of the divine and the care of people's souls are ignored. Loving God, we know that you are concerned with every aspect of our lives. So we also bring the little things that concern us the worries which keep us awake at night, the worries which only you know. Living God, reach out to all for whom the future brings fears and uncertainties. Remind us that you are able to transform even the bleakest of situations and bring healing and wholeness. Lord, we make our prayers in faith, for we know that your spirit is at work in our world, making all things new. And we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, go into this coming week knowing that whatever might befall you, whatever might happen, God is with you. May the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you.
both now and forever. Amen. Thank you.